OpenAI's ChatGPT, which was revolutionary at the time, it is now going to multiply what the possibilities are. This episode is made possible by OIT VoIP. Find your best-in-class revenue generation for MSPs all over the world. Learn more via the link in the show notes. Good morning, and welcome to the July 11th episode of MSP Dispatch, your source for news, community events, and commentary in the MSP channel. I'm Tony Francisco, and today I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Josh Holbein. Not Holbein, not Holbein. Holbein. We had this conversation before, everyone. And I'm yeah. just trying, how would you like this pronounced? He says, I've heard it all. Until I came along, he did not hear everything that I, I, I did. I've also heard the first name. I mean, the last time I went to Starbucks, it's not often, but they put, they put Jaish instead of Josh. So, um, J- that's just, Jaish. yeah, I don't, I don't know how you, I, I think it's the conspiracy that they mispronounce or misspell your name on purpose. So you post it on social media and then it's just free advertising. So, I mean, they're playing like 40 chess there. Uh, I, I like <laughs> my because you know, I'm like. How do you mispronounce Tony? It's Tony. Like, I, uh, it's it's all part of their grand scheme. Uh, but it is it is seven uh, eleven, so it is National Seven Eleven Day. So while you're listening to us go over the news, go ahead and uh, go grab a giant Slurpee. Uh, we don't have them here, so I can't partake. But uh, how do you please. not have a Slurpee there? What what what? what? We, have, we have we have we have Slurpees. We don't have Seven Eleven Slurpees, which I hear are like that's the the best you can get. Oh, we need so. to change that. And just for everyone's edification, where are you located? I'm in I'm in South Dakota. No 7-Elevens here. How dare you? You know what? Let's get into the news. <laughs> Jumping into my first story from the registered.com. OpenAI allegedly never bothered to report 2023 data breaches. And OpenAI faced criticism after the New York Times revealed it did not report a 2023 data breach. An intruder accessed a private forum used by OpenAI employees. However, the company chose not to inform public or law enforcement, believing that the breach was not a significant threat. This decision has raised concerns, particularly following the departure of high-ranking employees, including chief scientists Ilya Sutskiver due to safety concerns. Additionally, the macOS version of ChatGPT was found to store user conversations in plain text, bypassing Mac's security features. Although OpenAI fixed this issue, these revelations have damaged its reputation. So Josh, has it really damaged its reputation? (laughs) (laughs) Come on. Come on. I mean, you can go in any Windows device and see all of the access points they've ever accessed and the password for that SSID just like that. And Mm -hmm. I guess that damage, oh man, there's no more sales of Windows because of that. Um, Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what is the actual impact. Now, that being said, we have an interesting point on this conversation, which is, is there an exploit on a platform, a technology that's being consumed, or is there an exploit on conversations? Let's play this out. Um, someone's kid, one of the employees, their kid got access to the phone um, and installed, uh, and not even installed, um, took screenshots of some text messages of their parents, the employee, uh, and sent it out. We didn't really have confidential information. But should that be reported? I feel like we're we're starting to deviate away from the what is to be communicated and the value of that. Um, and is it have we point have we passed a point of, uh, of diminishing returns? Where now we just want to report everything that's involving this particular company. I didn't hear anything since the information was released. Um, it's a it's a could be a Discord server, or a chat server in some capacity. Um, I, I'm I'm trying to figure this out. What are your thoughts on this? Talk to me. Yeah, so the the first thing that came to mind to me was, well, are they required to report it? I don't know what the regulatory requirements are for that, but if they don't have the requirement to report it, um, that potentially, again, like you said, there's no sensitive data released or anything like that. I understand why they didn't you know, release it. And not only that, it states when you use it, it's part of their whatever acceptable use policy or the terms and conditions that, hey, anything that you throw, you put into here is going to be used to feed the system. So you know your information, you shouldn't be putting confidential information into chat GPT in the first place. Um, and if you are, stop it right now. Um, 
but you, I mean, you, anything you put in there, you have to kind of be under the assumption that, Hey, this is going to be used. This is available. Um, this is being publicly used to train it. So, um, it doesn't sound like there was like, again, source code or confidential information or PII or anything like that. Um, it just sounds like, Hey, like you said, it might've been, you know, a teams, a Slack, a discord, whatever it would be. Um, but how far is this going to go? I, yeah. I, you know what? One of the developers, we're going to report, ladies and gentlemen, um, very, very, very bad hygiene. Um, and we just, <laughs> we just, we just need to report this. This has nothing to do with the platform. Yeah. Absolutely nothing to do with the platform, unless the hygiene was so bad that somebody said, I will give all the passwords because your hygiene is so bad. It's making my eyes bleed. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, you, you know, like, but if you report on the open AI and things like that, uh, you know, you, you get, you generate clicks. So, uh, you know, that's kind of where we're Clickbait. at with it is, Hey, it's a, it's a good media story. It's a, a controversial or an open to scrutiny company. So anything we can get on it, you know, let's just, let's just keep piling on it. But, uh, um, well, with that, I think we should probably transition to the next. Hang on, people. It gets worse. Uh, <laughs> Josh, talk to us about the next story. Jump right into it. Meta drops AI bombshell. Multi-token prediction models now open for research. Meta has significantly advanced in artificial intelligence by releasing pre-tained models using a new multi-token prediction approach, first outlined in a Meta research paper in April. This method predicts multiple future words simultaneously instead of just the next word and promises better performance and shorter training times. As AI models grow, the need for computational power raises cost and environmental concerns. Meta's technique could address these issues, making AI more accessible and sustainable. Released on Hugging Face under a non-commercial research license, these models could enhance tasks like code generation, showing Meta's latest effort to stay ahead in AI development. Uh, so this is a super interesting story. Um, so kind of touch on that, how like OpenAI Copilot and those things work. And one of the reasons why they give you lengthy responses is because it's generating those word for word, basically, hey, based off of this word, this is the next logical word in this. And that's kind of why it can repeat itself or get lengthy. Um, additionally, the computational power is an interesting one. Uh, one of my good friends actually works in uh, the energy sector, and he stated that this year they had multiple sites uh, ready for decommission. But now with the raise in AI and these companies using it, they're now instead of decommissioning those, they're not only turning them back on, but adding on to them because we need these additional resources. So kind of a trickle down effect that I, I wasn't even personally thinking about. So super interested in talking with them. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're going to see this continue. I mean, I think this is the first in many, many, many developments like this. Um, it's not going to be a, hey, year over year. It's going to be a, hey, next month, here's a, a crazy feature that we developed. But what are your thoughts on this, Tony? Um, so, so let's, let's talk a little bit about large language models. So, uh, if you're driving, please pull over, you will fall asleep. This is going to trigger what some can call instant narcolepsy. Um, if you are into this type of thing, you are a sick individual and please, please reach out to me personally because you're my tribe. Um, so large language models are fascinating because what people don't understand is the concept of a token. What is a token? A token is a numerical value. A numerical value of what? The letters in the token? Because that's a lot of people. A lot of people think, no, it's the distance between one word and another word, probable word. That is a token value. And so they've structured the large language model um, almost identical to um, the uh, the human cortex and and the the synapse processing of a thought. So it is a distance. It's literally considered a distance between the words and it's processing these tokens um, in a large clump, but it is very linear. It's a serial model. In this particular article, they're referring to a multi-token, multi-thread prediction model, which can now take a variety of paths based on the distance between these words, not just word 
after the word, after the word, but now branching out, the treeing out and seeing where this could possibly go. So it, it's important to understand what a large language model is and, how, and when they refer to a token, it's not the number of letters, it is the distance, the calculated distance based on probability from the next word. Um, this takes an immense amount of training. It literally takes, in most cases, or it took in the beginning, thousands of people a very long time to say, this is probably the next word. This is probably, and then that gets uh, almost screened uh, by a group of people, then another group of people, another group of people, and then that probability builds up and then gets uh, put into the model. So that's what the training is. And then eventually it has the ability to self-train, but still do spot checks by, ironically, people. So um, to answer everyone's question, for those of you that are still awake, this is exciting, exciting news because it has taken AI, OpenAI's ChatGBT, which was revolutionary at the time, it is now going to multiply what the possibilities are, the, the, the speed, the capabilities are. Um, and it's this is the accelerating model that we've heard, the predictive model of everything moving forward in exponential growth faster than our brains can even comprehend. We are now more than on the precipice. I think this article tells us very clearly we're at the launch, we're pre-launch mode. So sorry to talk about this. Uh, Josh, are you still awake? Is that just a picture of you that is uh, generated by AI? Uh, no, what, this, what your... this is this is all super, I mean, it's super fascinating, but at the same time, it's also really scary. I mean, it's terrifying. Uh, there's there's the good, the, the bad, and uh, it's, um, yeah, I guess we're just along for the ride. And uh, we'll, we'll keep bringing you the news uh, before we're replaced so, by our AI overlords here. Exactly. <laughs> For all of you smooth brains out there, the slow thinkers, uh, if we only had a place that we could talk, ready? And three, two, one, boom! Look at that! Oh! Oh! oh I am. Uh, it doesn't matter. Hey, listen, open AI. I know you hear me right now. I know you're fast. You're not as fast as Simon. You're just not as fast as Simon. So, hey, uh, Discord. Get on this Discord server, uh, chat with us. There's a lot of good chat happening, a lot of smart, smooth brain, slow thinkers like us. Um, but eventually we'll plug in our own AI and then we'll all be talking we're like really cool. We're sitting back watching. Um, get involved in the discussion. And for everyone out there, please subscribe to this uh, podcast. We've been doing this. We're at episode 200 and something now. Uh, the feedback is incredible. We're always welcoming that feedback. We've got uh, Discord servers. We've got email. We've got... Uh, uh, YouTube. We've got, heck, you can actually call and just leave us a, a voicemail if you want to. So that being said, everyone out there, want to wrap this up, please, please, please stay educated and be safe. If you found this episode eye-opening, catch more MSP Dispatch at 10 a.m. throughout the week. Share your thoughts below and don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.